I'm a long-time Chitubox user and its workflow is buried deep in my mind at this point. And it's been tough riding that sinking ship when there's a lifeboat right there and everyone's already aboard and they're calling over to you just telling you how great it all is. Well, I finally did it. I forced myself to sit down and suffer the pain of change and taught myself lychee. And well, let's just say it wasn't without its challenges, but it's been well worth doing. So this video is hopefully going to help you avoid the pain I felt and just get right into supporting models with confidence, whether you're coming from Chitubox like me or are brand new to supporting models for 3D printing and looking for an introduction to lychee. Let's get one thing out of the way first. I am using the paid version of Lychee, Lychee Pro, and to be honest with you, I think this is what held me back from making the jump more than anything for so long. It just feels a little wrong paying for a slicer when they've otherwise been completely free in my experience. However, I am paid these days to manually support minis, so in my case, the expense makes sense, but for the average hobbyist and 3D printer enthusiast, I'm not so sure it's worth it. But that's going to be up to you. I personally hate these software as a service subscription models and much prefer a pay once, own it forever license. It's in large part why I use Reaper for audio, DaVinci Resolve for video, and Affinity Photo for graphics. Adobe eat your heart out. End of rant, moving on. When you first open Lychee, this is what you'll be greeted with. So let's go ahead and add a model. To pan the camera, use the mouse wheel button. For rotating, right click. And to drag a selection box, use left click. Up the top here, you will find buttons for the three different workspaces within Lychee Slicer. The first, which we're on now, is Layout. Here's where we can arrange our models on the build plate for printing. The next is Prepare. Here's where we need to go to do all our support work, be it auto, manual, hollowing, rafts, drain holes, and so on. And lastly, there's the Export area, where we can generate the sliced file for the 3D printer, export 3D files, either as STL or OBJ, and export the scene file. This is basically the Lychee project save file. You can also do that from the file menu with save scene and save scene as, or simply by using the keyboard shortcut, control S. Let's come back to these two pages later. And for now, head back to the layout tab. Down the left hand side, we have a bunch of tools. Objects will show you a list of all the current models in the scene and allow you to select them by name, as well as show you some technical info like vertice count and whether any models have issues. Then we have the Arrange tool. You can either click on it here or use the keyboard shortcut A. This gives you a simple widget that only allows movement in the X and Y axes and rotation on the Z axis. Use the arrows to constrain the movement along a single axis or the yellow box to move freely in both directions simultaneously. Then there's the Move tool, also accessible with the keyboard shortcut T, which gives you movement in the X, Y, and Z axes. Notice how there are two yellow boxes on the widget now. Clicking and dragging on the larger box constrains the movement to the X and Y coordinates, and the smaller box gives you all three axes of motion. I recommend sticking to the larger box or just using the Arrange tool instead, as throwing out the Z height of your model using the Move tool is very easy to do and can be problematic if you don't catch it. Next up, we have the Rotate tool. You can also access this quickly using the keyboard shortcut R, and this one actually has a few subtools included, some of which are pretty nifty, Starting with the basic rotate function, a widget appears that lets you rotate around any of the three axes using the inner wheels, and the large yellow outer wheel lets you rotate relative to the camera's position. The on plate option lets you pick a face of your model, and Lightshee will then orient it to the build plate using that selected face. Then there's orient to object, which does the same thing, but instead of orienting to the build plate, it orients to another model. Then there's auto orient, where Lightshee will attempt to calculate the optimal position. And lastly, Reset, which is self-explanatory. By the way, these last two options are available down here too when the Rotate tool is selected, as well as input fields if you have highly specific coordinates in mind. This applies for the Arrange, Move, and Scale tool too, which we'll look at now. The Scale tool, like the Move tool, lets us scale along a single axis using the arrows, all at once uniformly using the yellow box, or all at once non-uniformly using the purple box. I can't personally ever imagine this type of scaling being useful, but hey, it's in there if you need it. The scale tool is also quickly accessible with the hotkey S. Next up is the copy tool, which has a pretty nifty feature where you can specify how many duplicates of the selected item you want, and it will even arrange them all on the build plate after generating them too. If you're just looking for a single copy of an object, a fast way to do that is to use the keyboard shortcut Alt D. The checkbox for auto arrange will affect this shortcut too, so make sure that's off if you don't need it. 
Finally, we have a handy mirror tool for mirroring objects. The measure tool, which lets us click on two points on an object to create a measurement. Batch processing, handy for a whole number of things that I won't get into here in this video. And the magic tool, which in my experience isn't magic at all. Auto supports aren't there yet. Maybe one day, but for now, I recommend to anyone interested in learning supports to put the time in with manual supports, make lots of prints, and get a feel for how every support placed is interacting with the model and the printer. With a model selected over on the right here, we can update the file if we need to. Handy if some change is made in an external program, i.e. Blender, and you can even replace the model entirely with something else. Directly below that is the repair tool. Now, Lychee's repair tool is okay, but I would still recommend using Microsoft's 3D Builder if you can over Lychee, as I've seen Lychee's repair tool completely break models before. So just something to be aware of. All right, now let's get into the meat and potatoes, the prepare area. Here's where we're going to add all our supports, hollow models, and create drain holes when needed, and add rafts. Over on the left again, we have a few tools and familiar features, our objects list, supports, rafts, hollowing, and visibility. I'll get into each of these, but let's start with support. Over on the right side of your screen are all our support settings and features. Starting at the top section, we have our support settings for lights, mediums, and heavies, with specific sub settings for each. In my experience, we can get away with only ever touching the global settings. Here's a really cool feature. When we've dialed in some default settings we like, we can come over here to our custom button and then click on override preset light, medium, or heavy. And now we can easily revert back to these settings whenever we want by selecting a support size here, or by using the support hotkeys, control one, two, and three. Here are my settings if you're interested in copying. Next up down here, we have a tool for generating auto supports, some extra tools for manual supports, an island detector, proximity detection. I recommend leaving this on, it's actually pretty good. And our lift distance located under the utilities. This is something that threw me when I first jumped into Lychee, honestly. I was used to Chitubox automatically lifting the models when doing supports, but here in Lychee, you're gonna to wanna to come down here first and apply your lift. Here's something really cool though. Say you forgot to lift it and you started placing supports, you can simply apply the lift after the fact and Lychee will automatically extend all your existing supports to compensate. Pretty slick, Lychee. Chitubox, are you paying attention? <laughs> the island detector I could see being valuable to novices. However, I personally found that visually they're more annoying than useful as they block the fine detail, making it difficult to see exactly where you're placing the support. I recommend giving it a go and playing around with it, but I'd caution against making it a habit. I honestly think it's easier just spotting islands without it. So let's go ahead and place some heavy supports here just by left clicking where I want them to go. At any time, I can click on a support to select it and come over here to my support settings and manually change it. Or I can quickly switch it to a different size using the light, medium, and heavy buttons here, or by using the keyboard shortcuts, control plus one, two, and three. You can also select multiple supports at once by holding down the shift key and clicking on supports to add them to the selection, or by left clicking and dragging a selection box over the supports. You can left click and grab the tip of a support and adjust it to where you need it. And you can then use the keyboard shortcut Alt V to make it vertical again. A support that's been made vertical will remain so even if you reposition it again. If you wanna duplicate the tip of a support to create what we'll call a fan of supports, you might be used to double clicking on the tip if you're coming from Chitubox, but here in Lychee, we don't quite have that same functionality but instead what we have is arguably a little more involved, but ultimately a more flexible and useful system. And so I'll show you that now. If we position our cursor at the next point we want a support to be, and now hold down the Alt key and left click, Lychee is going to place the tip, but while still holding the Alt key, it wants us to specify where the base of this support should go. We can either send it to the build plate, but we can also snap it into the side of an existing support. Creating our fans this way gives us much more flexibility in regards to the angle at which our support hits the model by grabbing that tip and moving it around. The other option is mini supports. If you hold down Control plus Alt and click once where you want your support tip to go and then click again where you want it to terminate, you have the same functionality as before, but now in a way that's much closer to a fan you might be used to from Chitubox. You can adjust the width at the base over here under the base tip menu using the tip diameter slider. This is handy for ensuring these tiny supports are a little more structurally sound and don't fail. Mini supports can be placed model to model too and are perfect for getting into tight areas. Now with both types of these supports placed, we can select them 
and using the Alt D shortcut quickly and easily create more as we need them that will remain anchored to that same primary support. Do you see how this is superior to Chitu Box? But wait, there's more. <laughs> With the support selected, press the spacebar key to enter advanced mode. This is a powerful feature of Lychee that gives us the ability to fine tune our supports at each joint using widgets. Click on the tip, joint, or column you want to adjust, and pay close attention to the widget that appears because it is packed full of options. At the very center is a small box which lets us move in all three axes. Then the three larger boxes around that allow us to constrain the movement to any two axes. We can also constrain the movement to a single axis using the arrows. And finally, you can adjust the scale using the outermost white boxes. This advanced mode, in conjunction with those two previous support modes, makes it incredibly useful to tailor our supports to each model and even navigate tight spaces and get supports into those hard to reach places. To exit out of the advanced mode, hit the spacebar again. Speaking of hard to reach places, over on the right we have a clipping slider. When you click and drag this up and down, Lightshe will show you a preview of all your layers. You can also use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard for this. This is not only a very handy way to spot islands, it's also great for peering into difficult to reach areas. You can flip the direction of the clipping using the arrows here, or by using the keyboard shortcuts page up and page down. And if you're using UV tools to find islands, you can quickly and easily input the exact layer you're looking for by clicking on the lower half of this icon and entering it there. Super useful. I just wish there was an option to clip at both ends like you have in Chitu Box. Maybe Lychee could pop that in an update for us? Last thing I want to cover in this video on supports in Lychee is bracings. If you hold down the Alt key again and go to place a support, only this time starting from an existing support, you'll see a bracing appears. If you want it to terminate at the build plate like in the preview, then you need to double click. And if you want it to terminate at another support, then you simply click once where it should begin and again where it should end. Easy as that. If you want to quickly populate the area between two or more supports with bracings, come down here to manual support settings and click on the bracings button. Okay, now over here, if we click on the raft option, with our model selected, we have a new menu that appears over here on the right. The first option is no raft, and the rest are various different kinds of rafts. I highly recommend using the last type of raft, shape wall, for all your models. This is a great option for a nice mix of build plate adhesion and easy removal post printing. You can also fine tune the parameters of your rafts using the sliders below. I've cranked the angle all the way up to 200% on mine. Next up is hollowing and drain holes. Now, one of the things I love most about Lychee's hollow and hole tools is that they are completely non-destructive. At any time, we can remove or make adjustments to these. So over on the right here, we now have options for holes, hollowing 3D, hollowing 2D, and blockers. Let's start with hollowing 3D, as that's probably the most familiar to you if you're coming from Chitu Box. You can adjust how thick you want the walls of your model to be with the thickness slider, and even specify with what quality you would like Lychee to hollow at. I highly recommend just cranking this to 4 every time you use it, as I've been having excellent results by doing so. The hollowing in Lychee appears to be much, much cleaner than Chitu Box, with little to no weird artifacting. When you have the settings you like, hit the Add Update button, and here's what's really cool. If you change your mind and decide maybe a different thickness wall is needed, then simply adjust the slider and press the Update button again. Or maybe you decide it should be solid rather than hollow, then just hit the Delete button here, and it's solid again. Non-destructive editing. It is glorious, my friends. Now let's take a look over at the Holes menu. Here we can specify if we want our hole to be a cylinder or a cube, adjust the diameter, and how deep it penetrates our model. You'll want the penetration set enough that it pokes all the way through to your hollow interior. Then just click on your model where you'd like your drain hole to be, and you'll notice that Lychee hasn't actually made a hole yet, it's just placed an indicator of where our hole will be. We can actually now click and drag our mouse on this to reposition it if we like, as well as adjust our sliders over here on the settings if we need to. If you decide you don't need the hole, then just hit the delete key with the hole selected. There's also an advanced option which gives us a widget for a hole, allowing us to be more specific with how the hole interacts with the model. We also have an option for 2D hollowing, which is written into the sliced output for our printer. You can enable that by turning it on here, and there's a few parameters to play around with here, including, again, the wall thickness, as well as infill pattern. Now, I personally haven't tried messing around with this because 2D hollowing cannot be exported to an STL or OBJ file, as best as I can tell. So if that's important to you as well, then I recommend just sticking with 3D hollowing 
However, if you're just supporting for personal use, then perhaps 2D hollowing would be something worthwhile playing around with. Lastly, for this section, we have blockers. I have grabbed another model here to demonstrate the value of this feature, and you'll see why here in a second. If I go back to the hollowing 3D tab here and hollow this out, and now using the clipping tool peer inside the model, we can see I have one large hollow area here, which is fine, I want that. But down here in these exhausts, we have a handful of small self-contained pockets. So we can either add drain holes for these, or we can tell Lychee not to hollow these out at all by using blockers. So we come over here to our blockers menu, click on add, edit, hollowing blocker, pick a shape, I'm gonna go with a cylinder, and then just click on our model where we want the shape to go, use the widget to adjust and completely cover the area you want, then click on the update button to recalculate the hollowing, and finally click on the exit button to get back to the main prepare area. And as we can see, those little pockets are completely gone, ignored by the hollow function and have remained solid. Perfect. The very last thing we'll look at here in the prepare area is the visibility options over here. These are incredibly useful, especially when you're further along into supporting a model and it's starting to become rather crowded with supports. You can quickly and easily use these options to toggle exactly which parts of the supports you're seeing. Super handy. Okay, onto the export page. Over on the left, we have essentially a whole bunch of different viewing options. These don't affect anything other than what you see here in the preview window, so I won't go into them in any detail here, other than to say I think the simulation is kinda cool and banana for scale. Over on the right, you'll find three options. The first is where you'll export your sliced file for your printer. Here you can choose your printer and resin profiles, enable and configure anti-aliasing if you want, which, by the way, rather annoyingly, will never remember your previous settings and will always default to off. Why, Lychee? Why do you do it? Maybe I'm missing something really obvious and one of you can point out how it's done. I'd really love to know. I prefer to print with anti-aliasing on, so if I forget to enable it here, well, I'm sort of screwed. Anyway, you can specify a destination here, but that's totally redundant as far as I can tell because as soon as you click on export slices to file, it's going to ask you where you want to stick it. Export 3D is where you can export your scene to an STL or OBJ file. And if you've hollowed your model and added drain holes, I highly recommend checking this box to export holes to 3D files. Otherwise your models will be hollow, but with no drain holes. And lastly, export scene, which as I mentioned at the start of the video, is just saving the Lychee scene as a lychee.lys file. Again, you can do that with the keyboard shortcut Control S at any time or from the file menu. There's no doubt much more that could be covered about Lychee Slicer, but for now, that's where we're gonna leave this one. Some of the things I covered here were frustrating to figure out as a longtime time Chitubox user. And so I really hope that having watched this video, that that won't be the case for you. If you're interested in optimizing the keyboard shortcuts in Lightsheet for an even faster workflow, be sure to check out my video on just that. There's a lot of keybinds in Lightsheet that, in my opinion, just aren't convenient or well thought out. And so in that video, I show you my custom keybinds to really make supports in Lightsheet super quick and easy. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back soon to talk about the Anycubic Photon S. Still worth it in 2022 or nah? Find out soon on Once in a Six Side.